Good morning. Today we'll talk about how to improve your 500 meter row. Now I want to talk to you a little bit today about how to improve your 500 meter row time. Now I think the rowing erg is one of the most important pieces of equipment you can have in any modern day gym. Alongside the assault bike and also the ski erg, you have those three things together. That's a pretty powerful combination. Now 500 meter rows are seen up and down the country in CrossFit boxes and in gyms, you know, such as the popularity these days, which kind of explains why we get so many people to the website who read the original blog, How to Improve Your 500 Meter Road Test, over a few thousand times each and every month. And then so many of them keep coming back to me saying how they improve their time because of it. But what I wanna to do today is kind of go a bit deeper and share my latest thoughts on the 500 meter road time and how to improve it and our thinking around it. Now, along the way, I've had to learn some tips and tricks because us uh, vertically challenge people, I think is the best way to put it, um, struggle with 500 meter road times, particularly compared to our taller counterparts. Think about the Olympics. Why do you see so many tall rowers? It's all about arms and levers and it makes a big difference. So today I want to show you the tips and tricks that I use to help me try and keep up with those guys and perform as best as I possibly can. Now over the years, my philosophy to training has changed. So back in the day when I used to think about how much I could bench press and how much I could deadlift and how much I could, how fast is my 500 meter road time just for one effort, my thought process now revolves around how quickly can I recover and do it again? That's a big mindset shift. Think about this now. When you do a 500 meter road test, do you wanna go and do it again? And if you try to do it again, how well would you do? The answer would be not very well for most people. You see, most people think about uh, the 500 meter row time, or even their one rep max deadlift and bench press, and doing one single effort. Whereas my philosophy now is all about, can you do it again? And how well can you do it again? Because when the older you get, you gotta think in terms of health, and your well-being, and also just sports aren't like that. You're not gonna sprint once in soccer or in rugby and then that's it, that's the end of your effort. No, you're gonna do it over and over and over again. So the question I ask people now is when they ask me, well, what's your 500 meter road time? Or if I ask them what's their 500 meter road time and they're proud as punch, tell me I can do it in 130, or sub 130 or something like that. I'll ask them now is, can you do it again? What happens when you do it again? And that's an important mindset shift on where I'm going with my training and my athletic endeavors now. A lot of people think they're gonna improve their 500 meter road time just by rowing 500 meters more. Well, that is the case for complete beginners, but it gets to a point when you hit a plateau and you're not gonna get much further just by doing that. It's because there's a bit of a misunderstanding around the energy systems used. A lot of people think it's, because it's less than two minutes potentially for most people, it's more of an anaerobic event. Well, actually, it involves the aerobic system too. Now conversely as well, people think that just by rowing 500 meters over and over again, it's gonna improve your cardiovascular fitness. Yes, a little bit if you have zero base to work from to begin with. But again, it's way more complex than that. So for people out there who want to improve their 500 meter road time as one single event, this may not be for you. However, understand the principles behind it to help you recover faster, because it may help you get past the tipping point to be able to go deeper into your um, anaerobic system with a stronger aerobic base. So just bear that in mind. So the big mindset shift here is quite literally, Doing your 500 meter road test 
twice. That's right, you're gonna row 500 meters, rest for a certain period, and then you're gonna do it again and see how both times compare. And that's the shift I wanna talk about today and how I'd like you to see and how I'd like you to train for it and see what the carryover effect is later down the line to maybe improve that singular time as well. But instead, you can also work on both your aerobic recovery and what I call the aerobic, uh, uh, the aerobic battery. I'm still cheating on coffee, by the way. Cheers. Okay, so before we dive into the actual training plan itself, I need to make sure we're all on the same page and you understand where I'm coming from. Now, what that means is we need to talk about energy systems just very briefly. This ain't a scientific textbook, and I'm going to try and give you rough examples and ideas of where I'm coming from. And to do that, I need to dive into my iPad. So excuse the uh, childlike handwriting here. So, energy systems. You have three, essentially. You have the alactic system, you have the lactic system, and you have the aerobic system. They all work together to provide the energy we need to exercise, do the things we do throughout our day-to-day -day life, and everything else in between. But there's a difference at what point you use each individual system. So to illustrate this, we've got a picture here, you've got the graph on the screen. So if I show you what the alactic system is, that's the most energy you're gonna use, and it's gonna last a grand total of maybe around 10 seconds. So that's your max effort, and it's gonna be used up for about 10 seconds total. The next you have is the lactic system, which is, again, it's high output, high energy usage, but not as much as the lactic, and that kicks in once you deplete that 10 second energy storage, and that's gonna come here, and it's gonna be roughly around the 90 second to two minute mark. And then you have the aerobic system, which kicks in. That's the least of the energy systems, or the least energy used um, of the energy systems. However, it's the one that's gonna keep you going over and over and over. That's predominantly the one we use. We're living in the aerobic energy system now, and that's how we move day to day. It produces the energy over and over again, and it's to infinity. From two minutes onwards, roughly, is where it kicks in. But from this graph, what I want you to see is this, is that all three energy systems work together and you're using the alactic, lactic, and aerobic energy systems when it comes to certain events that are less than two minutes. Well, guess what happens in the 500 meter row? Most of the time, the good people are gonna get below 130, uh, expert level sub 115 for men. Um, those are very high energy outputs. But even though it's less than a minute or minute 130, you're still going to use the aerobic energy system there to kick in and help you get to where you want to get to. So, using the screen here now. Now, I've looked online to try and find this information about the 500 meter row and I couldn't find it. The nearest examples I could find was the 400 meter and 800 meter example. So bear with me with this. So what we have here now, if I use these as examples, uh, on a 2K row, the big brother of the 500 meter row and the one test that everyone dreads when they go and do it and they, if they've done it before because they know how hard it is. What we know from research is this, is that 80% of the energy systems used approximately is aerobic in nature. That's for an event between six to eight minutes, okay? So it's 80% aerobic, 20% anaerobic, okay? That's what we know from that. Now, when it comes to 400 meter runners and 800 meter runners, what we know from that is, is this. 400 meter runner, approximately 57% uh, is anaerobic. And uh, if I can do math, 43% is aerobic in nature. Now. I haven't got the data for the 500 meter road test, but you can assume it's gonna be roughly the same. Let's just, for argument's sake, say it's 50-50. So you're gonna use 50% anaerobic and 50% aerobic. So when it comes to the actual 500 meter road test, what I want you to think about is this. We need to optimize all three energy systems. You can't just focus on the short, sharp stuff to get you through it. No, you need all three and to optimize all three and that's what I want to make you understand so when I'm showing you the program now 
This is what I'm talking about. How to train around all three to get you your goal of getting faster with a 500 meter row, but also more importantly, build up your aerobic base so you can recover faster and you can go and do it again. Because the aerobic energy system is the key point to help you recover faster. God, my handwriting is awful. What's, what's going on with my hair today? It's all, all, it's all gone to plot today. I have no idea what's going on. Anyway, shameless plug time, very quickly. If you've read the book, Maximum Aerobic Power, you will know you need to earn the right to train anaerobically. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you need to be strong enough and you need to have a strong aerobic base. Now, I haven't got time. I'm not going to go into all that here right now. I am going to assume that you are strong enough and you have an aerobic base. But just to give you a rough idea, if men, if you can't deadlift one and a half times body weight for five reps and do at least five pull-ups, and women, if you can't do the deadlift for 1.25 times body weight and do two pull-ups, you're not strong enough yet maybe and you need to work on strength first to improve your 500 meter row time and in terms of aerobic fitness if you can't run 10k sub 60 minutes or row sub 13,000 meters both men and women um, on the rower then you're going to struggle aerobically as well you need to work on those aerobic base on that aerobic base and also the strength components first because you're not going to maximize what i'm going to talk to you about in the program but for the sake of this i am going to assume that you are strong enough and then you do have some aerobic capacity first, help understand where I'm going to. Because remember, I'm trying to improve your aerobic battery by doing the times and race twice here, okay? We're doing it this 500 meter road test twice. All right, so here's the program overview. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna test. You're gonna do the 500 meter road test twice, okay? So the test is phase one. Second part of the phase, second part of the program is you're going to work aerobically. You're going to build your aerobic base around the 500 meter test. So aerobic work is the next part we're going to work on. The next phase is going to be anaerobic work. Uh, work, and then you're going to do some intensification work leading towards the next test and to, you know, just basically get better what we're doing and bring it all together. So the fourth part is intensification. And then finally, love or hate me again, you're going to do the test right at the end. How long is it going to take? Well, it could take between eight to 16 to 24 weeks. Okay, I'm going to put this in eight week blocks with the difference being the anaerobic work was being more of a four week block. Um, but the idea is it's gonna take a long time to get this right and to really build up your energy systems and build a robust aerobic system. It takes time, there's no two ways about it. So all those problems you see out there, glitz your 500 meter row time in a matter of days, mm, it ain't gonna work like this. Not if you're trying to build a robust energy system and a robust aerobic battery that allows you to recover faster so you can go deeper and then repeat the whole process. Think about it, most people will only work on that one time, which is great if that's the test, if that's the accomplishment you want to achieve. But for health and everyday athletes, we want to do it again so we recover faster, so it carries over to our day-to-day -day life and also the sport that we do as well. Okay, let's get down to the training plan itself and talk about phase one, the aerobic side of things. This is like an aerobic base building. You can do this at the end of a workout or you can do this as a standalone workout, but I recommend doing this four to five times at least a week if you can and if you're able to do it to maximize it. Because here's the thing, to build your aerobic base, it takes time and volume. You've got to do lots of it and also a lot of your patience because it's not easy. And it's all about doing it sub aerobic threshold type work. So how do we start? Well, the program is basically this. Eight weeks long, you can do it three to five times a week if you can. So week one, I want you to do 500 meters row, and I want you to do that, and put it a different color, uh, five times. Okay, very quickly, and you're gonna rest two minutes, right? That's the plan. So you're gonna do 500 meter row, rest two minutes, and do it again five times. Three to five times that week. Then week two, times six, then week three times seven, and week four times eight. As you can see on the screen, I've already written down 750 meters. We're gonna increase the volume after that, and we're gonna repeat the process. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we're gonna increase the volume and increase the load throughout this. Now the question is how fast? So let's say 
you've done your test, you've run the, you've done the first one in 140, and then the second one was in 157. You're gonna take your slower split time and you're gonna row at that pace. So if you rowed the second 500 meter at 157, you're gonna take that split time and do it at 157 here. And what I want from each of those rows is to, to be rowed exactly at 157. Now, if you can do all that and it's quite comfortable, then knock a couple of seconds off and you can play around with that. But this needs to be easy work. It's all about volume and sub aerobic threshold. And throughout the whole period, you're gonna have two minutes rest in between. And that's the first phase. So you're gonna do a lot of rowing, at the end of your standard strength training workout, if you want to, or as a standalone piece, the more, the better. It's sub aerobic threshold work and it's gonna be slow and it's gonna be easy, but you're building a lot of volume, which then leads us into the next part with the 750 meter row. We're going above the, the 500 meter time and we're gonna row a lot of that too. So slow, easy stuff to begin with, and it's gonna build us in the right volume that we need to start then thinking about going into the anaerobic side of things, which comes in the next phase. So let's look at the anaerobic phase and phase two of the whole plan. This is the real shit work, the real hard work. And for those who are strong enough and who are fit enough, you will know how taxing this is on the whole central nervous system. If you're not strong enough and you're not aerobically fit enough, you'll feel like this is completely nothing. And if that's the case, you need to go back and work on your strength, increase your strength, and also your aerobic capacity. And one other thing I forgot to mention earlier on is that you need to improve your technique. Technique on the rower is everything. You'll shave off seconds just by improving technique alone. Now there's tons of videos out on YouTube about that. So I highly recommend checking that out later down the line. My computer screen just completely changed kind of like. Anyway, so let's look at phase two, the anaerobic phase. This is only four weeks. Long. The reason for that is, well, you can only go for about four to six weeks at a maximum time here because you're going deeper into it. It is so taxing on the body. Your body does not want to stay in this system. It's just horrible, horrible stuff. So we're gonna limit this to only four weeks. Now, prior to each week of training here, you're gonna test for your max calories on the rower in the given time frame. okay? So week one, you're gonna do sets of 20 seconds. So if I put it on the, the whiteboard here, 20 seconds is gonna be your time. So you're gonna do 20 seconds all out for 10 rounds. You're then gonna to go to 25 seconds in week two, 30 seconds in week three, and 35 seconds in week four. So we're doing a bit of lactic into, uh, alactic into lactic stuff. Now, Yes, it's beyond the times on the old energy system charts, but the rower takes a while to get going. This is what the times here. If you do this on the assault bike, you'd be looking at much less because that gets up the speed that much faster. But the key thing is now is prior to each week, before you do each of these 20, 25, 30, 35 seconds, you're gonna test for max calories, which means how many calories can you hit in that given time frame? And for each of these rounds, you're gonna hit those exact same calories. So let's say as an example, in 20 seconds you test and you get 13 calories. You need to hit 13 calories in each of those rounds until you can't and that's when you stop, right? And the same with 25 seconds. Say it's 15 calories you can hit in 25 seconds. You're gonna go as hard as you can to hit 15 on each round. Now, you may change throughout the program. You may find 13 calories or 15 calories becomes too easy. Then you need to retest and get it back up to 14. But each and every one of these rounds, each one of these sets needs to be maximal effort. You're going as deep as you can into your nervous system to get the right dose response. Now, what happens between sets? You're gonna rest two minutes. That is the most important thing here, resting two minutes between each given set to go deeper into it. Now, you can skin the cat multiple ways, but I'm just giving you a rough idea of the thinking and the thought process to how we do things when it comes to building your anaerobic capacity. Again, send hate mail to Josh Kennedy. This is a lot harder than it looks. Just make sure you're strong enough and you make sure you have the aerobic base because to do this correctly, you need to be able to recover faster. And that's where the aerobic base comes in. Because if you haven't got the aerobic base, you're gonna do one or two of these rounds and you ain't gonna get very far with it. Okay, so the last part of the training phase is what we call the intensification phase. And we need to become more race specific or the test specific, which is also gonna help with your overall aerobic capacity and recovering better as well. So if we go back to the whiteboard here very, very quickly. So 
I'm gonna do six weeks here. You can do longer, you can do slightly less. Again, it's all comes down to your individual fitness goals and where you're currently sitting. But as a rough idea, this is what we're gonna be doing. So over the course of the week, six weeks here, you're gonna be doing this again three to four times a week and you're gonna be working at race pace. Okay, so we're gonna go back to your original times. Again, let's say you did 140 in the first one and 157 in the second. We did 157 for the first part, rowing aerobically consistently over and over again. This time we're gonna choose 140. So I want you to row the 250s, 300s, 350, 400, 450, and 500 at this 140 per 500 meter split pace. Okay, that's really important. We're gonna work back at the original pacing of what you were doing, and we're gonna build volume on that. That's what we're trying to do here. So, first and foremost, 250 meters, I want you to do 10 sets of this very quickly. 10 sets, you're gonna do eight sets of 300. 350, you're gonna do six. 400, you're gonna do five. 450, you're gonna do four. And then 300, uh, 500, you're gonna do three. That's kind of the phase we're gonna work on here. When it comes to rest, we're gonna work into a one to one rest ratio, okay? One to one rest ratio. So if you say you do 250 meters in one minute, you're gonna rest one minute and you're gonna go again after that at your race pace. Again, the key is you're not trying to do multiple different paces here. Every single one of your rows should be exactly the same in each week. So what do I mean by that? So say again, you row 250 meters at one minute pace. All 10 sets should be exactly one minute in length and time that you need to complete it. Say 300 takes 110, every single one of those eight sets needs to be in 110. Don't go one minute, 57, up here. No, that's not working the aerobic system or the energy systems properly or creating a structure to move forward. That's just random shit, okay? So we need to keep this controlled and build up the volume. And it's called the intensification phases because we're building up the pace and volume around each of these. Now. That's one way to do it. There's multiple other ways to do it, but I'm just giving you a rough idea of how we think about these types of things when we're performing these sorts of uh, rowing programs or aerobic training plans. And I hope it's making sense to you now. So once you've gone through those three training phases, you come back to the final phase, which is testing again, where you're gonna hate me again, even more for doing this. So remember, we started off by doing the 500 meter row test times two. And we're now gonna bookend this by doing it again with that sandwich of training in the middle. Now, hopefully you, can, hopefully you can see what I've done here now is that we've taken you two times, we've used the times and the split times to calculate your program accordingly. So we've done the aerobic volume by doing your slowest 500 meters. And then we've trained in the middle and then we've gone back to your fastest time and we've created uh, an intensification phase around that time. You can go faster, you can go slightly slower if you want to, whatever works best for you, but that's a good idea of how we can calculate the times you need to get to, to build volume around the original pace that you did. Now I'm hoping when it comes to the final test, again, you're rowing 500 meters, resting for 90 seconds with your feet in the straps and rowing 500 meters again. Not only will you have improved your original first time score, but I'd like to think you will have considerably improved upon your two times combined together. Now I've seen people make 30 to 40 second differences when it comes to this, particularly the beginners. At the elite levels, well, you're gonna make smaller differences, but it gives you a rough idea of what we need to do. But also it highlights the fact that with a 500 meter row time, even though it's such a short piece in the grand scheme of things in the world of rowing, it is 50-50 aerobic and aerobic. So there you have it for today. I just wanted to give you a rough idea of how we think when we're creating a, like a rowing plan and to help you get you on your way with the 500 meter times to improve that time, but also think differently about it and how you can maybe recover faster for your sports and general health too. So don't just think about your rowing times for just one singular piece. If that's the race, absolutely think towards that in that lines. But if your plan is to be better at the wads you're doing, the CrossFit boxes, or just even general health and other sports you're trying to do, think about the ability to recover faster. That's such a key element and something that's often overlooked. So what do you think? Give the plan a go. 
I'd love to hear your feedback. Leave a comment down below as well. Do you disagree with me? If so, great, I wanna hear about it. How can we improve these theories and structures? Let's hear about it, let's see how you get on. What was the best takeaway from today's piece as well? Anyway, I'd love to know. Make sure you subscribe and leave a comment below, like I just said, uh, and press that bell notification if you love the content we're putting out there. It supports our channel and goes a long way. But I'll be seeing you anyway in the next video.